가장 숭고한 경의와 최대의 영광을 삼가드립니다. Yeah, it's it's a long journey. A lot of trashing. Basically, my sister left with her friends because we just didn't have enough frozen potatoes. There's no way we could just maintain our survival there. Only way is to escape. All I knew was. China has lights. And I thought, okay, if I go that where the light is, there will be some food. I didn't even know what it means to be free. All I wanted was a, a bowl of rice. Yummy. At the age of 13, my mother and I crossed the frozen river. But you know, unfortunately, Chinese government they don't like acknowledge us as refugees, and they send us back, even though that we will face death or imprisonment. So a lot of Chinese people are taking advantage of our vulnerability, and that's how human trafficking is happening for Russian people. And myself and my mother both were victim of that. Two years later, I found out that if I go to South Korea, I can be free. And I crossed the Gobi Desert to Mongolia with my mother. You accept, you might die. Because there is no way going back. You just dying from the, you know, executed by the regime. We throw knives, we throw poisons with us. And that was the last try to live like human beings. We dig it. When we got arrived in Mongolia, the soldiers called us and they were like, you are going back to China, then you will be sent back to North Korea. And that's why we were not hesitate to tell them like we were going to kill ourselves. Because we know what the consequences are. We will be executed or imprisoned forever and starve to death anyway. So we were like pleading them and threatening them. Somehow, luckily, they didn't sound so bad. I mean, when I came to America, I was really nervous. Because we don't have internet. If you're this country, you can just type Americans and you see their photos. But for us, we are not allowed to travel, we don't have internet. So you just see the paintings that government draw for us. Which is like USA and big nose and blue eyes, like looks like monsters. And for me, that was the image of Americans. Like a year ago, something more than that. That was the first time when I was in America. Sitting in the room, there were like thousands of white people. And like I got on the stage, and like I looked at them, and they looked all the same and just see the power of that brainwashing. And like that way, like even the songs that you sing, the books you read, and the math problem, science you learn, everything will be the brainwashing. Law and the powers existed for protecting the wealthy, strong people. That, that's how I understood the power. I understood power in that way. I never knew power exists to protect the weak and the voices. And through my life, I just thought that was normal. People disappear for no reason. Like my, my sister's like friend's mother, she just got executed and several months later, government said, oh, you just made a mistake. That was it. Seeing like rats eating people, yeah, I think it, you can only imagine those kind of images in the hair. And, you know, <laughs> a lot of people are going through that. So it's no surprise. There's no terms of like a word like for the justice. No word like for liberty or even love. It's different planet, I think. 
There's no way I can express, explain, or create with our human language. <laughs> Without freedom, we cannot fulfill our potentials. We cannot be who we are. So that's why I think I was ready to die for freedom. And I have no regrets. That choices that I made to be.